Hello everyone, Shiva Safkara here today with the Jetson Bolt Pro video. If you are not been following my channel, or if you're new to my channel, um, I make technology videos covering Tesla and other technologies, including e-bikes, and I've been doing a lot of videos on the Jetson Bolt Pro, the folding electric bike from Costco that costs $299. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about how you can replace the battery on this bike. And a lot of you requested I look into a more affordable battery that does not cost you know, $150 that the manufacturer charges for a new battery on this guy. So I started looking into more affordable battery. And last week, I posted a video about how you can install two batteries on this bike. So not only just the stock battery that you have, but add a second battery. And this battery that I found in eBay, for about $100, it seems to be working really well. And when I did that video, at the end of the video, I promise you all that I would make a follow-up video covering this battery, tell you all about the range, what I think about the battery, does it heat up the bike, the performance, and so much more. So today's video is gonna be just about that. I do not work for, or I am not being sponsored by Jetson, but since you all have been supporting my channel so much with your subscriptions, your likes, your share, and your very, very kind words, I am humbled, I am honored, and I want to continue bringing all of these cool accessories and upgrades to the Jetson Bolt Pro bike so that I can continue to make your Jetson Bolt Pro ownership better and easier. So keep asking those questions, keep interacting with my videos. And together, we can take this channel to the next level. Before I tell you all about this battery, there seems to be a common question that I get. It is the confusion between voltage and amp hour. What do they mean and what should I choose for this bike? So for voltage, think of voltage as a horsepower in your car. Higher the horsepower, the faster the car is going to go. That is the same thing with voltage in an e-bike. So let's say this bike is 36 volt, but if we have a 48 volt battery, the bike is gonna go faster and it's gonna be more powerful. But keep in mind that you have a controller in the bike that is probably going to limit your speed and power. And in some case, using a 48 volt battery for a 36 volt battery rated bike, it could burn your controller. The amp power on this original battery is six amp hour versus there's 10 amp hour on this this battery. What does that mean? What it really means is think of amp hour as a gas tank in your car. Bigger the gas tank on your car, more fuel is gonna hold. That means you are gonna be able to go farther distance using a bigger gas tank. It's the same thing here in the e-bike is this battery has more amp hour, that means you're gonna get more juice. That means you're gonna get higher range using this battery versus that battery. The nominal volt, or often referred as an average volt for this battery, is 36 volt. Even though it's a 36 volt battery, to maintain that 36 volt throughout your riding experience, it needs to be higher in the beginning. So at full charge, this battery reads about 42 volts. Even if I plug it in for longer than when it says the battery was full, Couple hours later, I was still reading 42 volts on this battery, which means the over voltage protection system on this battery is working. The battery completely turned off at around 32 volt, which means that the automatic low voltage protection system on this battery is working because if it drops any below 32 volt, it might, there might be a permanent damage to this battery. So I'm happy to report that both the over voltage protection and the under voltage automatic voltage cutoff is working good for this battery, at least for the time being. Before I show you the numbers of my most important test, which is the range test, I wanted to make something clear. Because this is a lithium ion battery and you need to understand a few things about lithium ion batteries and how they work and how they affect your range. Since I live in Colorado, it gets pretty cold out here in the winter and our trails are not necessarily flat because we are in the Rocky Mountain region. Cold weather causes range loss. This is true for all lithium ion batteries. These batteries rely on chemical reactions to work and cold can slow and even stop those reactions from occurring. Since cold conditions drain these batteries, you will need to charge them more often. Since my tests were conducted in cold weather below 50 degrees, the range will probably be a lot lower than what you might get if you are in a warmer area. Hills and slopes causes your bike to work harder, thus draining your battery faster and giving you less range overall. 
Riding against the wind will also make your bike work harder and you will lose range because of that. Finally, the rider's weight affects your range significantly. So higher the weight, lower range you're gonna get because the motor is working really hard to power and then is draining a lot of battery by doing so. So here are the details of my range test. I conducted two different tests, two different times. Both were kind of in the cold weather, but one when the temperatures were in the high 20s and the other test that I performed when the temperatures were in the 40s. I started my test using the original battery on the Jetson Bolt Pro on both times and then whenever this battery died, I plugged in this battery and did my test. So I'll be able to give you the numbers on both of these batteries. The first test I performed was a trail nearby my house. So I started in this particular location and I took the trail all the way until my Jetson battery completely died. I was riding against the wind and the temperatures were cold and the elevation kind of changed throughout the bike trail that I was taking. So it was understandable I wasn't gonna get what the advertised range is for that battery. So I, when the battery completely died, I got about 8.39 miles. I know the, the max advertised range is 15 miles for this Jetson battery, but keep in mind what I told you earlier about the cold weather, slopes, rider's weight, the, the numbers are gonna be a lot better in the summer. Anyways, uh, when the battery completely died, uh, to keep the test consistent and the environment kind of consistent, I just had my wife pick me up from the location that the battery died and then we drove all the way back to my house and I started the test again using this eBay battery. So I plugged this in and then I took the trail again. And to my surprise, I was able to get at the very end of the trail where the trail just ended and I was able to make a loop and come kind of a halfway back to my house, which was really awesome. So at the end, when all of this happened, when the battery died, it didn't just die. I still had some juice left, but it was just not throttling, so I was becoming unbalanced. And since the test was for the full throttle, not for pedal assist, I didn't want it to pedal and screw up the test. So I, I just stopped the test right there when I was probably like two or three miles per hour and it was becoming very wobbly and I was losing balance. So that's when I called off the test. So my battery died around this location here and I got 13 and a half miles. Pretty impressive compared to the Jetson battery. So the summary of test one, I got 8.39 miles from the Jetson battery and 13.5 miles from this eBay battery. That is 5.11 miles higher for the eBay battery compared to the Jetson battery. So for the second test, I found this perfect loop where it was 1.45 miles total around the loop and there were very nice bike paths throughout the loop. So I decided to do my test here and it, was, it wasn't as crazy of a slope as the first test, it was more level. I started with the Jetson battery and again, it was the temperatures were in the 40s so it's not a warm day. Um, it, the snow was still in the ground, it was melting. But I did the test and I felt like I wasn't getting the full power on both of these tests. Uh, the second one, I was reaching an average speed of 11 miles per hour. Uh, again, the weight affects it and whatnot, uh, but 11 miles per hour, I, I normally get a little bit higher speed than that in the summertime. So when I started, I parked at this particular location and then I just did a full throttle using the Jetson battery first. My Jetson battery did six full loop around this whole loop and then the battery died around this location right here, which is 0.68 miles. When I tally the numbers, I ended up getting 9.38 miles total for the Jetson battery, which is a little bit better than the first test I did and temperatures were a little bit better this time around. The eBay battery did 10 full laps around this loop, which is 1.45 miles, and it died at the 0.91 mile on the 11th loop. So when I tally all of this up, the total number that I get is 15.41 miles for the eBay battery, which is six more miles compared to the Jetson battery. So when I tally both of these tests, I get an average of 5.57 miles more range with this eBay battery compared to the Jetson battery. So eBay battery is a winner in this case, but 
this was expected, right? Because the Jetson battery is just six amp hour, eBay battery is 10 amp hour, and as I told you earlier, higher the amp hour, more range you're expected to get. And this was all done in the cold temperature. Unfortunately, it hasn't been really warm here for the last couple of weeks, but as I said, I'm gonna continue testing this battery and I'll let you know. So when the summer hits and when I'm riding this bike, and if I get you know, the close to that 15 mile range from the Jetson battery, I expect to get 20 miles out of the eBay battery, which is pretty awesome. Let me tell you all the things that I like about this battery, and then I'll tell you the things that I don't like about this battery. First, I really like the capacity. It is significantly more capacity for the eBay battery compared to the Jetson battery, so I'm really happy with it. It is also the same size as the Jetson battery. That means we can use this battery to replace the battery right over here, and it fits perfectly. So I really like that. I also like that the manufacturer claims the total life cycle of this battery is between 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycles, which is awesome. So after you know 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycle, this battery becomes unusable. Compared to the Jetsons battery, they claim it is 300 to 500 charge cycles. So that is a huge difference on how long this battery is going to last you if you purchase this battery. I also like that the manufacturer provides two-year warranty on the battery for, for the eBay battery versus Jetson does not provide you warranty on the battery on the Jetson Bolt Pro battery. Self-discharge rate for this battery is also listed as less than 3% per month. So if you fully charge this battery and don't use it as a store during the winter time, it should only drain less than 3% per month. Uh, I don't know what the discharge rate is for Jetson battery because they don't list that information. This battery comes with all the safety features already included within the battery, such as the automatic over voltage protection, automatic under voltage protections, short circuit protection, and much more. You can check their spec out in the product page, which is pretty awesome for a battery that just costs around 100 bucks or less. Battery also comes with a charger, so you don't have to spend more money purchasing an additional charger for this battery. Finally, this battery doesn't cost you arms and legs and it still provides you the performance that you need and a lot better performance and range than the Jetson battery because the Jetson battery costs 150 bucks, this costs under $100. Now, let me tell you about things that I don't like about this battery. First, I don't like how it does not come with the XT60 connector that we need for this bike to work. And I wish there was an option for us to add that connector built in so that you don't have to figure out what to do. The same thing goes for the charger. I wish it came with the SM connection instead of this charger that is built into the battery. That would solve a lot of problems when you are trying to just replace the battery here. If you don't want to do a dual battery, if you just want to replace this battery with this battery, um, you know, it would be nice if it came with the SM connection and XT60. And as I showed you in the last video, you can just purchase a Dean's T plug connector to a XT60 connector from Amazon. I'll put a link down below for that. But, you know, if it came, already came with this plug, it would make life much easier. I also don't like how this battery does not come with a sort of a hard shell like the Jetson battery does. It would it would help with mounting options so we don't have to figure out an additional hard shell connection. I mean, this is pretty typical. So I'm not blaming this on the manufacturer for not putting a hard shell connection, but the, the original Jetson battery, as you saw in my previous video, had a more of a hard shell outer cover, which makes it easier to mount outside. And those were honestly the only two things I don't like about this battery. Everything else is perfect. I absolutely enjoy riding on this battery and getting that extra range. For its higher capacity, longer battery life, decent performance, and an affordable pricing, I highly, highly recommend this battery. I'm gonna put a link below so that you can check this battery out. I'm gonna continue testing this battery and I'll bring a video to you guys, you know, periodically letting you know how this battery has performed and what the long-term ownership of this battery is going to be. So far, it has been great. Comment below what you think about this battery or if you have any suggestions for future videos in my channel. I know that a lot of you have asked for me to look into a new controller. Uh, that is definitely on my mind and I have been looking into some of the controllers. So if I do decide to purchase a controller and do an upgrade, I will for sure bring a video detailed step-by-step -step on how to do that. So 
Now would be a good time to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, so that you don't miss that video or any other video to my channel. I also ordered a DPDT switch so that I can go between these two batteries easier so that, you know, one, ba one battery dies, I can just flip the switch and then the other battery will activate. I haven't worked on it yet, so I don't know if it is going to work or not. We have to figure out the, the correct amperage and whatnot. But as soon as I figure that out, I'm going to make a video showing you all how you can do that to your battery. There will be a lot of videos on this bike in the future covering different aspects of the bike, modification, accessories. I am going to make another accessory video here very soon, adding more accessories to the bike. Hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, namaste.